When growing, our forests are absorbing and storing carbon, helping fight climate change. But when forests are lost, that stored carbon is released into the atmosphere. It's estimated that deforestation and forest degradation in developing countries account for nearly 20% of global carbon emissions. Which is why the United Nations is calling for countries to take action under its Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation Initiative, or RED. The first step towards reducing these emissions is understanding how much forest there is in each country and how much carbon they contain which is why many tropical countries are drawing up their first ever comprehensive forest inventories. Foremost among them is Tanzania, with its national forest assessment project, Nuforma. With such good information, or accurate information, we can know how much should we cut out of the forest, and how much should be conserved. And we can even go further to know what type of forest should we look more on that because it stores a lot of carbon, it gives out different forest products. These Naforma field workers are plotting out their route for the day. They've come to measure trees and collect soil samples from 10 plots on this site, close to Mount Kilimanjaro in northern Tanzania. One of 3,400 sample sites across the country. Using a precise GPS device, they can trek for several hours before locating the more remote sites. Once there, they collect information on the canopy cover and the number, size, species and quality of the trees. And they interview the local population about their use of forest resources. Importantly, they're also assessing the forest's so-called carbon pools, one of which is soil. As leaves fall and decompose, some of this carbon that's been stored in the tree is transferred into the soil. Soil's contribution to climate change is not yet fully understood, but we do know forest soils are a massive carbon stock. Soils store two to three times as much carbon as living plants, so it is really important. And the problem is that we don't know yet how this carbon uh, stored in the soils could, can be released to the atmosphere if the land use, for example, changes from forestry to agriculture. And this is, this is one of the questions that the Naforma Soil Survey tries to address. Run by the Tanzanian government and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and funded by Tanzania and Finland, the project's 16 field teams have been working for two years, gathering information from all over the country. The soil samples are brought to this laboratory, a day's drive away from Mount Kilimanjaro at the Soikun University of Agriculture in Morogoro for analysis. First, the samples need to be dried out. Then they are ground, weighed, color-coded and analyzed for pH, particle size and organic carbon content. The soil data is then analyzed and shared using FAO's open source software tools known as Open Forests. But now we know that we have some areas which are highly fertile and those needs maybe to have some other ways of conserving it so that we can have really maintain the carbon stocks in those areas. Areas such as this on the slopes of Kilimanjaro. Here the Chaga people have developed their own form of climate smart agroforestry over centuries, which has sustained some of the highest population densities in Africa on these mountain slopes without degrading them. The principal crops are coffee and bananas. Both grow in the shade of larger trees chosen for their abilities to fix nitrogen into the soil. While farming is intensive, the farmers can serve water and recycle organic matter to ensure their methods are sustainable. However, these farms are threatened due to falling coffee prices. Shida kubwa tunayopata kwa kwa sisi hapa kwanza ni yale mapato yanayopatikana ndani ya shamba yanakuwa kwa kweli kwa watu wenye familia kubwa kuweza kuelimisha watoto shuleni kwa sababu kulipa ile ada ya shule ni bei kubwa sana. Over the last decade many struggling farmers have cleared their farmlands of trees to grow maize. Without the trees there is more water runoff and a loss of nutrients from the soil. The land typically loses productivity within a couple of years. 
A NAFOMA can be very useful to gather and present the data to policymakers to show um, how climate smart uh, these agricultural systems are and what other environmental benefits in terms of soil and water conservation they bring. This will be a basis for making better policies and we will hope that then these types of farming systems will receive much better support from the government. The current analysis will also tell scientists and policy makers how much carbon is currently stored in Tanzania's remaining forests, including forest soils. But the challenge now is to track how that carbon stock changes over time, so that the government can make decisions that will result in an increase rather than a loss of carbon stocks. But we have different approaches here. One of them is to do it, to, to do it again after, say, five or five or ten years do the same exercise but it's an expensive venture now being an expensive venture we are also thinking of uh, instead of going to the field all the time and do the sampling come back to the to the lab because it's a laboratory it's very expensive uh, sort of uh, using this data to and to to put them in a certain model to, so that we can do some kind of modeling so that we can do some estimation or the changes or to can monitor the changes with time the model that the Naforma team intends to use to monitor these changes in soil carbon is the YASO model. Using the data currently being gathered, as well as some additional data on rainfall and temperature, the model will estimate how the carbon stock will change into the future. Teams would return to certain field sites to collect data to validate the accuracy of the model, but another full-scale soil inventory would not be necessary. If Tanzania can increase the carbon stock stored in its forests, the country stands to gain financially from the United Nations RED initiative. The main aim of RED initiative is to try capturing the excessive carbon within the atmosphere to the forest. We will come out with the change, you see? The change of how much carbon has been added from, from the atmosphere to our, to our forest stores. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, how, will he, how much then should we pay for that storage? Soils could play a major role in capturing carbon. Conversely, if the soil's carbon stock was released into the atmosphere, it would be a major contributor to climate change. And here in Tanzania, climatic changes are already having an impact on local people's lives. Niliaona wakati wa zamani huwa zilikuwa zinanyesha sana alafu ukiotesha miti nayo inaota kwa mbio mbio haraka haraka lakini sasa hivi ukame ulipotokea ikawa kwamba ukiezesha tamti au kui tena vile vile jua linakausha ndio maana sasa hivi kumekuwa mabadiliko kumekuwa na jua kali alafu hewa imebalika sana the changes in climate change there they are enormous we can already see change of rainfall pattern comes when it's not expected and when it comes is too much than what is needed by farmers. So this really, you know, it affects the food security. Tanzania could use its forests to stem climate change, but its forests are under pressure. People fell trees for firewood and for the production of charcoal. They also fell the forests to make way for agriculture and grazing. The wealth of information being gathered during the Naforma project will help inform better policy making that supports both forest conservation and environmentally friendly utilisation of the land, such as sustainable forest management and farming methods. It is hoped the project will serve as an example to other developing countries that sustainable forest management can be more profitable than the unsustainable alternative.